I want you to understand this slide very well. I want you to understand this point, this concept very well. That when we're counting pushes, each push must be a higher than the previous push. Now, notice how if I buy this stock here, let's do a different color here. If I buy here, I get push one from my entry point. I get push two, but notice how push two is actually higher than the high of push one. You see? But notice here how this can't be push three because the high of push of this green bar is not higher than the high of two. So the highs must be higher. This high is actually lower. So it can't count as a push. Now, I can have an order waiting up here in push three territory. Come to Poppy, come to Poppy, come to Papito. Boom. All right. But I don't yet, I have not yet earned the right to take a profit. Okay. Now, it's possible, check this out, guys. It's possible that after my entry here, I have achieved here, let's say 30 cents. So that's rule one, but I have not achieved the right to take it all. So I take one half here. But I'm now going for my ultimate right here to take it all or to take half of the half if I like. But I can't take it here. So please understand that every push must be a new high. This is not higher than the push two, so it can't be push three, all right? Push three would come here. Boom! You see that? That would be push three. So it's not just green bars. Pushes are abrupt um, uh, moves that are higher than the previous abrupt moves, okay? All right, the very important point there, very important point. Boom! Now that's a profit-taking right. Notice that even though this bar inches out the high of push two, the bar itself is not a push. It's a we're not interested in taking profits on on baby little teeny eensy weensy little tiny moves. We're looking to take profits on surges, momentum, jumps, violence, if you will. Abrupt, sudden, okay? Not, those aren't profit taking. Listen carefully. It's not profit take, all right? What is that? Really? No. That's really. Do it. Do it. Just don't spit on me. Do it. You know, I want to see you do it. Show it to me. You can do it. Type it in for me. That's what we're looking for. All right. You can do it. Show me. I want to see it. Let me see. I want to see it. Show me. I want to see you. Show me. I'm not moving until you show me. We can sit right here. <laughs> Type it in. I want to see it. Type it in. <laughs> no. <laughs> there we go. I see it. Yeah. All right. I love it. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I love it. Okay. Yeah. All right. We've got rule number two in the bag. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, let's talk about this little nuance. No peekaboo highs. I just talked about that. Nope. We want. This is not a profit take, but the next one can be. All right. So I might throw an order up here in advance in a third push profit taking area and just root the stock on to reach my play. Come to Poppy. Boom. Order achieved. Order hit. Nice. Sometimes having that order in there in advance is better. You um, get in line at that price earlier. All right. You also, if you're a professional trader, you earn an extra fee if your orders are placed ahead of time. Did you know that? You earn an extra little fee profit an extra little fee called a rebate but you have to be professional not retail but if you're a professional trader you earn that extra fee for placing orders in the market ahead of time and so just by placing that order up there at three my traders get an extra one dollar and 25 cents it adds up guys all right for every 1,000 shares if the order's placed there ahead of time. And so they would get this, the gain in the play, boom, plus the extra 125, okay? Now think of after 300,000 shares traded in a few days or 300,000 shares traded in a month, 300,000, all right? Shares divided by a thousand times 125, it adds up. It, it adds up, guys. So, this extra fee is beautiful. All right. When you place your order in the markets ahead of time as a professional, as retail, they take that fee from you. So, when you trade on Robinhood, Robinhood gets the $1.25 and does not pass it to you. Okay. They take it. You get it, really, but they take it. So retail does not get it because the brokers take your $1.25 every 1,000 shares. Um, the professional gets that pass to them. All right. Very different. Okay. So uh, no little peekaboo new highs. All right. I told you we need a green bar to supersede the high of the previous bar but not in a peekaboo fashion. We still need that bar to be a, not a little tiny insignificant bar. All right. So in this case, boom, we got it. All right. We got this marginal peekaboo new high, but we're not acting on that. We're acting on this one. So there's a complete one, two, not that one, three. Three pushes done complete. Now, remember, guys, you may have gotten an opportunity to take at 30 or 50 cents here. Remember the first rule. Maybe you took half there or one third. And you're taking half of the half to one third of the half or all. One half, one third or all. Remember, you are rich. It's your choice. If you don't, look at this asterisk here. If you don't take it all and you decide to take none, let's say, you say, wow, Oliver, no, I like the velocity with which my third push was achieved. I think there's a fourth, fifth, and maybe a sixth one. I'm going to hold on. That's your, that's your God-given right as being a rich trader. Congratulations. Just don't lose this bar. Boom, out. Don't lose more than that bar. Don't let it drop down here. You understand? So protect yourself under the bar that gained you your <clears throat> wealthy or rich rights. Okay? So if you're going to try to try to see if there's another push and another, 
is fine. Just don't lose the bar that earned you the right to be rich. Don't go back into being poor. Tell me you understand this. Don't become poor again. That's it. You can hold on. Just don't become poor again. This bar made you rich. Don't become poor again. All right? That's a general guideline. Guys, are you writing this down? Do you understand how just what I explained there can help reward you for the rest of your trading life? Just not losing the bar that made you rich. That rule right there, done forever, will reward you forever, will protect you forever. It's crazy how one little thing can have such a lifelong positive effect on the way you trade, the, the your level of professionalism. I'm sharing, these things sound basic, but they're extraordinarily powerful. And they bring clarity to your market play. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, how many players are actually crystal clear throughout the entire trade? Very few. There's no clarity. There's usually confusion. There's usually guessing. There's usually fear. There's usually hope. There's usually, I don't know. Uh, you know we're not, that's not us. All right. That's not, if you're mine, that's not, that's not us. All right. We're crystal clear. We know what's next. We know I have no business taking, I have no business thinking of profit taking right now. I've got one push. I've got no business thinking of profit taking right now. I've got two pushes. I got my order waiting up there at third push, but I'm not going to be, oh my God, should I take it? None of that because I know I haven't earned that right yet. I've got 20 cents. The novice is thinking after 20 cents. Wait a minute. Um, should I risk this disappearing or should I take it or what, what should I do? Not my traders. 20 cents is nothing. You understand that? Do you understand that the, that the first rule is teaching you that you don't have anything at 20 cents? You don't have anything at 29 cents. You don't have anything at 28 cents. You have nothing. You are nothing. You have nothing. Your trade is nothing. Stop giving the trade a status before 30 cents. Why is this important? Because if you start taking 20 cents gains, your average loss is going to be larger than 20 cents. So where does that put you? You take 20 cent gains, but take 35 cent losses. Really? That's a recipe for disaster. So rule number one protects you minimum 30 cents. All right. It speaks to the notion that you don't even really have a profit until you achieve 30 cents. And in certain price ranges, you don't have a profit until you achieve 50 cents. This solves a huge problem that novices in the market have. When have I achieved a takeable profit? And when am I taking prematurely? Because if I become a premature profit taker, I'm a guaranteed loser because my losses will dwarf my premature gains. All right. All right. So write these things down. Take these notes. They're life changing. And I've never really done this with this type of detail before for my general following. So I hope you appreciate it.